Hi everyone, uh, welcome again to this fourth video um, of our Terraform series, uh, Infrastructure as a Code. Uh, as we go on with this uh, yesterday, or rather our previous video, we, we looked at uh, the Terraform language syntax. We, we were able to look at, at how to write our, our Terraform code and we were able to understand the various Terraform blocks that, that we have. We looked at the Terraform setting block, we looked at the provider block, we looked at the resource block, input variables, output blocks, local blocks, and we were able to define how they, how we can write every block. And we looked at that different blocks will require different uh, labels, right? We have like a resource block requires two labels, right? So we looked, we looked extensively at that. Now, in this video, we are going to, to proceed and look at look at variables, how we can write everything now in variables. Now for our setting for our setting blocks, we were able to 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 configure our setting and provider and a resource block we were able to write our code. We were able to write write our code and we we went through the Terraform workflow. We also equally used a script used a script whereby we installed bootstrap this strip on the on the script on the ec2 instance that we were creating then once we initialize it we were able to initialize it validate it we ran a terraform plan terraform plan um ultimately we ran a terraform apply uh with the terraform apply we were able to create our ec2 instance um we verified we went and verified uh that our EC2 instance was created. And then we also went on the browser and accessed our, using the public IP of the EC2 instance, we were able to access uh, these different parts and we were able to see a display of, of uh, welcome to landmark technologies on the browser. So we did that all in our last video, video and finally we were able to to run Terraform destroy it to clean up. Now, one of the things that we did realize that when we created that EC2 instance, we didn't use a key. We didn't pass any key, right? We didn't pass any key to it. Uh, we didn't pass any data source, right? And we also have, have some other arguments like count and outputs and all that, that we actually didn't, didn't do that. So in this video, we are going to to move ahead and look at look at what what variables variables are. So when we think about variables, uh, let me see a second here. Um, variables. So when we think about a variable, so a variable is a value that can change. Basically, it's something that varies. It is something that can change, right? So depending on the condition or the information passed in the program. So variables are used to store information to be referenced and manipulated in a computer program. So they always provide a way of labeling data with a descriptive name so our programs can be understood more clearly by the reader or even ourselves. So it is helpful to think of variables as containers that hold information. Now, if, if I have a container like this right here, so this container, it has some contents. It has something, something inside of it. Now, whatever I put inside can change, but the container, container basically remains. So this container, it can be like a variable, right? What varies? is inside, right? So whatever is inside of this, this container can change. So it can vary based on what I put inside. So a container or a variable is just a, a, like a container that holds information. So their sole purpose is to label and store data in memory. This data can be used throughout the program. 
Now, in Terraform, we have uh, a number of variable types that are supported. So the first type is what we call a string variable, okay? So for a string variable, a string variable is usually represented by double quotes, like these double quotes, right? Uh, double quoted sequence of Unicode characters like this. So if you pass anything, any variable with these double quotes, <clears throat> Terraform will interpret it that as a string variable, okay? As a string. So now when, when you are declaring a variable, again, we say we are going to use the variable block, the variable block. You use the variable block, then here you are just passing a label. What is the label? I'm trying to create a variable for a VPC name. And then the type of variable that I wanna pass is a string variable, right? So I have to declare this type. What kind of, what variable type am I passing? So this variable type here is, is a string variable. Now, once I pass this, this string variable like that, I declare that the type is a string variable, and then I can put a default, right? So default means um, I'm assigning this variable, I'm assigning it a, a value. This is the value and I'm putting it in double quotes because the string variable, it will expect anything in this double quote. So I'm assigning my variable, I'm assigning it to this, to this variable. So this is, this is uh, the first type of, of variable. Now, the other type of variable that Terraform uh, supports is what you call a number variable. So a number variable, numbers are represented by unquoted sequence of digits, right? Without, with or without decimal point, just like 15 or that, just a sequence of digits, right? And now for a number variable, we don't put it in quotation mark because this double quotation mark, this is a string variable. So if I'm, I'm creating a number variable, a type of variable, which is a number, and then I'm just going to use just a sequence of digits like that. Like if I'm creating an SSH port, I can just say the variable, this is the name is SSH port, but then the default I'm assigning, this variable I'm assigning it a number, which is 22. Now, the other type of variable is what we call a Boolean. So a Boolean variable, they are represented by unquoted symbols. That is true or false. So a Boolean variable, you can put, assign a value of this, it is the variable, the name of the variable, I'm calling it enable, or you can give it any name, right? But the default, it is unquoted symbols. It is either true or false. This is what we call a Boolean, right? True or false. Now, the other variable type we have is a list. Now, a list, is represented by a pair of square brackets containing comma separated sequence of values. Like you put it in this square bracket, then inside of it, you can put values that are separated by, by commas. So anything in square brackets, right? We Terraform will interpret that as a list and you can put a, a list of strings or you can put a list of numbers, right? You can put a list of strings or a list of numbers. So a list is just anything within these square brackets. And then now like here, I'm passing in strings. So these strings, they have to be in double quotes, but then they are separated by commas, right? So this becomes how I'm gonna, gonna call a variable of type list, right? Then get a list. So then obviously how to reference as we will see, we we'll always start with the keyword var referencing variable, and then dot the name of the variable, right? The name of the variable. And because it is a list, they, they are different values, values, then we will put the index, the placeholder of, of the index within the list. And now a list will always start with index zero. So this value one is at index, position zero, 
this value two is at index position one. So if I wanted to get the instant type of this value two, then I'll put inside this square bracket, this is the list, I'll put here value one. If I wanted to get value one, then I'll put here zero because this is the index zero, this is index one. So this is a list type of variable. Then we also have another variable which we are calling a map. So for a map, a map variable, for a map variable, so we have a map, our object, it is represented by these curly braces, right? These curly braces. You put anything in these curly braces inside it, that is, it, Terraform interprets that as, as a map. Then inside the map, you are basically putting a series of key value pairs, key value pairs. So you are putting this key value pairs is key equals to value one, key two equals to value two. So inside of the map, it will expect key value pairs because you can map a number of, of key value pairs within that. So therefore I can define my variable like this using key value, value pairs. Then again, how we are going to reference the, the variable map, we are going to do var dot the name of the variable, which is my map. And then inside of these square brackets, right? We put the key, like key one, then the output, this variable, it will return the value. So we always select the key, right? And then another type of variable is an input variable. Now input variable, it is, it is a variable whereby we pass, but we don't, we don't supply any default values, right? Like all this, we've been supplying default values, whereby we, we are assigning values to, to the variable. Now, if we declare a, a variable, but with no default value, then this variable is considered as an, as an input variable. That means that when, when we, we run Terraform, when we are going to apply, Terraform will prompt you to input, right? Terraform will prompt you to input the value. So that becomes an input value. So when you run Terraform apply, and then you, it will ask you input uh, the, the name. It will expect you to, to input that particular value of the variable at runtime, okay? So that becomes an input variable. Then we equally have like an output. So for, for an output, once we declare an output in our, in our output block, that is just the name. Then inside, we mentioned yesterday, we will have the value and the value will be the, the, the resource type, then dot resource name, then the attribute, like we want to output an ID, okay? So that is, that is an output. Then we usually have, have what we call tuples. Now tuples are just like lists, are just like, uh, like lists, lists that contain, lists that contain uh, strings or numbers. Uh, like you can have like cut, this is a string, this is a number, this is a string. So you can have a mix, a mixture of different objects inside of one list. So that becomes what we call a tuple, right? It becomes a tuple. Then the same thing with, 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 a, with an object, an object. Now for a tuple, we are passing it inside of this square bracket as a list. But for an object, we are passing it inside of this curly braces, uh, similar to, to a map. But we can pass, because we are passing it as, uh, as a curly braces as a map, and then we'll have like key value pairs. Right, key value pairs, we are saying name equals to, these are key value pair, key value pair, right? So that's how, that's how we are, we are, we are passing it. And here we are also mapping default, right? For the name we are passing and default is that, then for the port is a list of number and we are passing, passing that list, okay? So we have, <clears throat> we have those, those basic, basic uh, variable type. So we have, we have a string variable, we have a number variable, 
we have a Boolean variable, we have a list variable, and we have a map variable, okay? Then we have an input variable. Then we have this output, this is an output block. Then we have a tuple or an object, right? Then we will see now how we can use, use these variables. So why, I va why are variables, uh, variables uh, crucial? So like yesterday or rather in the last video, when we looked at, at when we were creating an, an EC2 instance, right? We just created an EC2 instance whereby we used our, our Terraform uh, uh, setting block. We used our, our, our resource block, right? We used our resource block. And, and uh, so today we are going to see now how we can use, how we can use a variable block. So if I go to my, to my, my editor right here, editor, and what I can do is that I can, I can just copy, copy what we did, like we had this resource. We have this resource that we were creating. I can copy it and I can just paste it here. Paste it there. That was our resource. Then inside of this resource, we had our provider, provider block. And actually we had our Terraform setting block. Okay. We had our Terraform setting block. Terraform setting block, we had our provider block, right? And then we equally had had our script. We had our script. So I'll leave, we had our script right here. Okay. We had our, our script. We have this script right there. We have this script that we are running and um, bootstrapping on the server. So now with this, we did realize that when we talk about a variable, we are, it is a container that holds holds data. So let's say, we want to, this region, when we are pro, uh, provisioning uh, our infrastructure, this particular region, we have set it up that, that our, our default region is, is what? Our default region, right now we are provisioning our infrastructure in US West 2. But what if tomorrow we wanted to provision it in US West 1? So therefore we can pass this as a variable, right? So what we need to do now is I can create a variable block, right? So it is variable. This variable block will expect one label. And what is the name? I can say uh, region, right? I can say region. Region, this is, this is the name of, of my variable. And then Inside of that, that block, I can say uh, the type, the type, or maybe I can put a description first. Description, description, this is <clears throat> description, it is the AWS, the AWS region. This is just, I'm just describing what, what this variable, variable will do. And then the type, the type of variable, it is a string. I'm putting a string variable, right? And then I can put a default, a default region, 
right? And the default region here is what? Is US, US West, US West 2. This is the default region. So now I have declared this variable here, a region. So now, because now I've created a variable here, so I'll go back now to, to this region right here. And instead of this, I'm going to call this as a variable, right? <clears throat> so I'm going to say re my region is var, referring to a variable var, but dot, which variable am I referring to? It is now the variable name region, var dot region, okay? Var dot region. So now here, I have called this particular variable. Now I'm putting my provider as a variable. Okay, and then we equally have <clears throat> have something like like the AMI and the instant type, right? So what I can do is that now I can create another variable. I can create another variable, um, another variable right here. I can create another variable. Or what I can do is that I can just copy this because the block the block is the same i can copy this and just paste it here and now with this i'm saying ami i want to pass this ami as a variable so i'll i'll say my underscore ami i can give it any name the description if I want to put the description is the AMI, the AWS AMI, right? <clears throat> AWS AMI, and the type is a string. Then the default, now I can copy this. I can copy this, right? As my default, I can copy this and basically paste it here. Paste. So now I have my default AMI passed here. Then what I will do is that I'll now go back to this, to this, delete that, and now here I'll pass it as variable var dot the name. What is the name? It is my AMI, the name of the variable. So I'll do var dot my underscore AMI, okay? My underscore AMI. So I'm passing this AMI here as a variable. Then the third thing is I, I can also pass this instant type, this instant type as T2 micro. So I can copy this, copy this, and paste it right here. And then now this one, I'm calling it instant, instance, underscore type, okay? Description is the AWS instant type or the EC2, EC2 instant type, right? The type is a string. Then what is the default? The default here is a T2 micro. So I'll come in here and I'll put this as a T2 t2.micro, okay, t2.micro. So now with this as a t2.micro, then I'll come back to this instant type here. And now what do I do? I will check out this, but now instead call, call the variable. So var dot dot, the name of the variable is instance type. So var dot instance, instance underscore type, right? So now I've, I've now put these two, these variables, variables right here. So now with this, I've now used string variables. I've been able to pass all these, my region as a variable, my AMI as a variable, my instant type as a variable and all that. So with this, I can now copy, 
copy my code, right? I can copy my code right here. I can copy it and go back to my, my VS code, VS code right here. And inside of this, I can create another, I can create another directory. I can say, uh, variables right and inside inside the variables i can create a file and this file i can call it ec2 right dot tf ec2 dot tf so now with that ec2 dot tf ec2 dot tf i can just pass Press my code right there. Okay. Now I have I have this code. I have my provider. I have my resource, and I have my variables. Okay. So now what I can do is I can create inside of this folder. I can create a, a variables file. I can break down this file so I can create a new file. Then I can say this is variable variables .tf. Right, variables.tf. Once I make an entry, I'll go now and cut these variables out of this. I can cut, then go to my variables file, and I'm going to, to pass because all this is within the same module. I'm going to pass my variables right here. Then on this EC2 resource, I can equally cut this and put it in. in uh, a provider, a provider, I can create a new file and put it as a provider.tf, provider.tf file. So I can go back to my EC2 and cut this provider out, out of this, cut it, go back to my provider and paste this files here. So I have one file that contains my provider, right? It has a variable region. I have another file that has my resource. This is my EC2, right? This is my EC2 resource, my EC2 resource. And I have another file that contains just my variables, okay? That contains just my variables. Then what I can do is that I can copy this script I can copy this script and paste it inside inside this variable because this script is also being called on this EC2 as user data. Right now, with that, once once I have done that, now I can CD inside of these variables inside of my Terraform. My Terraform, if I if I ls right here, I will see that I have. I have this variables, variable file, right? But what I can do, let me clean up, let me delete, delete that, let me delete this, let me delete this telephone lock, let me delete that the telephone. Okay. Now inside of this, if I ls, I only have this variable file, variable directory. So I will cd, cd into variables. Once I cd into, into that variable directory, if I ls, now I only have this provider variable.tfec2 and my script, right? My script that I'm writing. So from here, what what now I can do is I can initialize. I can run Terraform, Terraform init. Once I initialize, it is going to download for me the provider. It is going to download all the plugins, the plugins that that, that I need uh, to run the Terraform workflow. So right now it is just downloading downloading the plugins. So once it once it downloads the plugins, then we'll just run validate 
for it to be able to, to validate the code. So the initialization phase has been done. So now I can run Terraform, Terraform validate, Terraform validate. When I run Terraform validate, uh, Terraform validate, it is, it is a success, right? It is a success. Then now I can run Terraform plan. I run Terraform plan. Terraform plan. Again, I don't know why I keep getting this error. I run Terraform plan. Let me let me reset my my credentials. Set my credentials. It shouldn't happen. It, this shouldn't happen all the time. I think there's a an issue with my IDE. I'll try to figure what is going on. So I need to reset credentials. And then once I run Terraform plan. Terraform plan, it is gonna generate for me a plan of what it's going to, to create. Now all these things, it is pulling them from like this AMI, it is pulling them from a variable because I pass I passed all these all these as variables. So then with that, with that saying, I can run Terraform apply uh, auto approve. Okay. Once I auto approve, it is going to it is going now to create for me the infrastructure. It is going to create the EC2 EC2 instance, right? It is creating the EC2 instance, and I basically passed passed everything everything here as variables. So now this is now how I can use use variables. I can break out my code and use variables use a variable file. So Tomorrow, if I want to provision to provision a different instant type, all I need to do is <clears throat> come to the variable file and just change change the instant type right here. Okay, change the instant type right here. So, like right now, it is provisioning a T two micro, but if I want to change it to a T two medium, all I need to do is just come to the variable file and just change it right here. So now, like right now, it has created that instance right it has created that instance let me see if i go on my on my aws management console i just log in as good and let's say The I sign in, it is an Oregon EC2, EC2. Then we see that this, this instance, instance that I just created, it is, it is initializing and it's a T2 micro, okay? It's a T2 micro. Now, what will happen if I, if I went ahead now and said I want a T2 medium, a T2 medium, a T2 medium. I, I, I realize that my instance is too small, so I want a T2 medium. So all I need to do is just change change the variable file. And once I save, I save, then I can run Terraform apply, right? I can run Terraform apply. When you run Terraform apply, auto approve again, then it is going to check like what is existing. It's refreshing the state. It looks at what is existing. Then it realizes that this instance, the ID, the instant type was a T2 micro, but now you're changing it to a T2 medium. So what will it do? It will start modifying it, right? It starts modifying that instance now from a T2 micro to a T2 medium, okay? So it is now modifying it. So if I go to, 
to my my instance <coughs> instant right here and i i refresh now it stopped the instance it is stopping this t2 micro instance once it stops it it is going to modify it then <coughs> it is going to modify it then what will come up now is it has changed it to a t2 medium okay it has changed it to a t2 medium and then now it is going to 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 start it to start it right now it is gone now into pending so it is it is now starting so it is still modifying it pending and now bootstrapping it right bootstrapping it then very soon it will start the instant will start will start running so now with this we see that right now it is still modified so it is modifying it it has to start it and then start the bootstrapping process so now we see how we can use terraform to easily provision provision and modify our resources and here we are just using using uh, variables to be able to switch now your instance is now running but it's running but it's still initializing right it is still initializing now it's running the bootstrap strip uh, script script so this is how we, we are able to use to use a uh, terraform to easily uh, work with our resources so that resource has been created and we saw that we used we used the uh, uh, variables now we cannot equally use use variables especially when we want to create to create uh, like we can use a numbered variables numbered variables as we said when we are using a uh, numbered variables you can use a number variable especially when we are creating creating something like like an ssh port now here what we are going to do is we are going to try and create a security group <clears throat> security group <clears throat> excuse me whereby we are able to open open different ports so for a security group when I look at at uh, at our manifest, at our manifest, let me see. We have security group, security group. Um, we have. We can create. We can create a security group if we go on to, on to our. Console. If we go on to console and and say Terraform, Terraform security security group example, right? Wonder resource. So a security group, AWS security group <clears throat> example. So with this, it will show you it will show you this how you can create a security group and this is a resource right so our resource will be aws underscore security underscore group this is the name right so what we can do is that we can copy this we can copy this once we copy that we can go back to to our environment right here and we can say this is our security group we want to create to create our security group this is our security group uh, we can say security security group <coughs> so we can pass a we can create a security group security group like this now for this security group when we create the security group this is the resource is an aws underscore security group then this is the name the name like we are allowing tls traffic and then basically this is a description description that we are putting inside there and then the vpc id do we want to attach it to to a vpc right we want to attach it to a VPC. So 
we can we just want to create to create a security group. We don't necessarily want to attach it to to any VPC. So we can leave that. Then for a security group, it will have what we call ingress rules or ingress, ingress, these are the inbound rules, right? These are inbound. Then we equally have have like egress. Egress is your outbound rules. Okay. Now for this, I can put a description. This is just describing what this egress, egress block, which is a map, what it's going to do. Then right here, you see it is from port to port. Okay. From port to port. So what this means is if, if I go to to my to my AWS and I go to security group, if I go to security groups and I want to create, let's say I want to create create a security group. Uh, when you create a security group, it will ask you to put the security group name and the description, right? Once you put you put in the in that, then for the inbound rules, you can add a rule. Now, for, you need to 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 select what kind of of protocol, right? What kind of protocol? And with that, it tells you the range of ports that you want to open, like port range. So you can say if it's a let me say I want to open TCP. Right, it gives you a port range. You can open from zero. If it's all TCP, it is opening all these ports from zero to six five thousand and all that. Then you can custom like the source is are you doing IPv4 or IPv6 or your IP, right? So you can select this. So that is the same thing now with, with Terraform. Right here, when it says from port, it is giving you a range. So if I wanted to open from port zero, from port zero to port four four three, then this is how I will pass it. It will open all the ports from zero to four three. But since I only want to 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 open one port, that's why I'm saying from port four four three to port four four three, and the protocol here is TCP, right? TCP. And now you can equally pass your your CIDR block, like. Your CIDR block. You want you want this 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 uh, basically this security group. Which CIDR block do you want want this security group to 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 be open into? So it's being attached to to this particular VPC CIDR block. But I'm not interested in in IPv4 six CIDR block. So we can just get get rid of that, right? We can get rid of that IPv6. Now this is the same thing with with our outbound egress, I'm opening all ports and the protocol, negative one protocol, meaning all ports, and this is the side of block, right? I'm opening, I'm opening all, all ports, all ports within, within this. So with that said, what I can do is that now I can, I can copy this, this security group, I can copy it, then, what I'll do is that I'll go back to my, my VS code. Now, inside of these variables, I can create, uh, inside of these variables, I can create another file. I can create another file. Then this file, I'm just naming it security, security.tf, right? Is a security group that I'm that I'm I'm creating. Then I'll just paste my code right there. So once I paste my code, my code right there, this is not the security group that that I'm trying to create. It is going to, to just to open port port four four three. Or let's say yes, we're just going to open HTTPS uh, uh, traffic port four four three, right? Port four four three. So let's see what. All right, so for this side of block, we'll also just put, put this side of block whereby we are, we are opening from anywhere. So we are opening, that is our side of block. 
our side of blood. So now that is, this is a, a security group that, that we are now creating, okay? Now, if we go to, to our documentation, if we go to our documentation, let's say, uh, okay, let's see, we wanna go to our documentation on security group. So for the security group right here, we've, we, have, we are now creating a security group, but we want to attach this security group on our EC2 instance. So if you go to your EC2 instance, right? You look at EC2 and go to your AWS instance, right? Now, what can you input? So you look at your arguments, your arguments right here. What can you input? So let's look at how we can input our security, group, how we can attach our, our security group. So if you scroll down, if you scroll down, you will see here security groups, right? Security groups, EC2 classic and default group PC only, a list of security group names to associate with, right? So if you are using a, <clears throat> a default VPC, just like we are, we are deploying this this uh, this uh, instance in a default VPC. So we can we can add a we can attach a security group. And again, it is saying it will be a list a list of security groups, right? A list of security groups that that we can output, right? But otherwise, if optional VPC only, you can put a VPC security group IDs a list of security group IDs to associate with, right? So we can use either uh, this uh, security group or we can use VPC security group IDs, right? Security group IDs. So if we use these security groups, we are passing a list of security group names to associate with it. But otherwise, if we want the security group ID, then we are passing VPC security group IDs. So let's use the IDs of, <clears throat> of this particular security group that we, that we are creating. So what we will do is we will, we will copy this VPC security group IDs. Once we copy that, so we go back to our, to our instance, now our EC2 instance, and now we want to, to associate this, we want to add a security group or to attach a security group to it. So inside of our, our, our block body for our resource, we want to add this security group, VPC IDs. And we say this one, it is a list, right? So because it's a list, so we'll put it in, in this square bracket. But now we want, we want the, the, the security group ID. We want the ID of this security group. How do we get the ID of this security group? So if you go back to your documentation again and look at look at your security group, so you can look at a security group or you can just search on Google, on Google or security group, or security group, security group. Okay, what I can, what I can search is, is a Terraform, Terraform security group example, security group example, and then you can go to to your attributes, like what you can output because we want the ID. When the security group is created, we want an output, we want an ID, so I can go to attributes. So once you go to, to your attributes, you realize that now you can you can just get the ID. This is the attribute ID, okay? ID of a security group. So because I want I want the ID of this security group, then I'll go back to my code. Now here in on my instance, so the list here will be, I want the ID of this security group, right? How will I write the ID of this? It will be the resource name, right? It will be the resource name. Like that ID will be 
the resource name, which is AWS, AWS underscore security group, AWS, AWS underscore security group, underscore security, security underscore group. And then dot, then the resource name. This is the resource type. It is AWS underscore uh, group. And then, then the resource name, which is allow underscore TLS. This is the resource name, right? And then dot, I want the attribute. I want is the ID, okay? I want the ID of this. So I'll cut this from here. Uh, cut. Then I'll go to my EC2 instance. Now for the VPC security group ID, this is what, what I want, right? I want I want this ID and I'm passing it as 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 a list, right? I'm passing it as a list, so I can attach multiple. I can attach multiple, multiple. Yeah, so I can attach multiple security groups on this instance, right? So on this particular instance, now I have my variables, uh, and my instant type, I'm passing this script, but I'm also attaching a security group. And this security group, I'm just creating one security group, which I'm calling allow TLS. And this particular security group, it is a resource that is being created, right? That it, this resource that is being created, then once it's created, it will be attached to, to that particular, particular instance. So with that, what I can do is once, oh, once the, the file is, once the, it is saved, right? then I can go and run Terraform apply. I can apply it again. So Terraform is, is going to, to see the changes now. It says and close configuration. So there is, there is a configuration here that is not closed. So this resource, you see this resource, this calibrates it is not close because this matches with this. And then this egress, right? This egress will match with this because this tag is matching with that and closing. So I need to add to add one more. And for, for this VS code, you will see it, it will show you that you have a problem, right? You'll have a problem and it will show you what the problem is, right? and cross configuration block. So what I'll do is that I'll add one calibrate so one one calibrate is right here. So then no problems are, are detected. So now once I add that and my code should be should be good to go. So I go back to my terminal. Then on my terminal I'll just run apply again. So <clears throat> once I run apply it says security line 24, security the admin name tag is not expected here. Okay, let's see on line 24, tag is not expected here. So I guess I need to I need to cut this. I need to delete this. Put put it right here. You put that right here so that this tag becomes the overall name of that. I'm not just tagging the address. 
Let me see if that, if that solves it. Solves it. So apply. <coughs> Okay, it's not checking the instant, it is refreshing. And then uh, it realizes there's a security group that needs to be created. So now it is going to create this particular security group. And then it's modifying the instance. It is modifying the instance because now it is attaching a security group on the instance. Okay, so it has created the security group and now it has modified the instance. So if I go on my on my console, on my console, and go back to my EC2. <clears throat> EC2 in my instance is running, instance running. Then I will see that if I go to my security, then I will see that there is a security group called allow TLS that is attached to this instance. If I open that instance and I look at it is HTTPS because I open only port 443, right? So for my outbound, it is basically opened all traffic. So basically this, this instance, this security group, which is called allow TLS, which we specified, which we specified this as the name, allow TLS, and actually it's this tag, allow TLS was created and we attached it to our instance. We got the, after the security group was created, we created an ID, we outputted an ID, and it's that security group ID that we attached to, to our instance. So now we see we are now building up, so our EC2 instance has, we've passed variables, and we've been able to create a security group and attach to it. So now with this, we'll come to the end of, of this video. And in the next video, we will, we will see how we can use use uh, uh, other variables like input variables, how we can use use what we call dynamic blocks, how we can use use different variables to 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 basically provision provision our our infrastructure. And we will also look look at various examples whereby we will now look at at data sources, how now we can use the data block. So so far we've used that a provider block, we've used a Terraform setting block, we've used a variable block. Now, next time we will be using a data data block or a data source block. And we'll see, so we'll just keep building our code till the end, by the end of end of end of our course, then we'll be able to to write to write um to write code um maybe just to write to write code code that will look code that will look maybe something like this versions local uh, variables block modules we'll be able to write all these outputs tfvars and all that so we will be able to look to look at all this that so next video we'll be looking more on 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 variables okay thank you very much for watching